the sale of a good medicine. So you're stopping the sale of a of a good medicine. So you're stopping people from being able to use that medicine when it actually does work. Okay, well what would be the consequences of that? Um, well, stopping the sale of a good medicine um, well, obviously it would stop people from getting that medicine, right? You're, so you're sort of restricting access. Maybe there's some people out there that could really use that medicine, right? That have, that have high blood pressure and really want to use that medicine. This isn't as big a deal as I, unless it's sort of a game changer medicine, a medicine that's never been developed before. But a lot of times there's quite a few blood pressure medicines on the market. If they, if they restricted the use of one of the medicines, there's other medicines available. But if this was like a, you know, a game changer medicine, as I refer to, is like a, this is a medicine that it hasn't been developed before, then this could be a serious issue. But I'm thinking money-wise, right? The pharmaceutical company stands to make a lot of money, millions and millions and millions of dollars, based on selling this medicine uh, worldwide to millions of people. So we're stopping the pharmaceutical company from selling a medicine that actually works. So it sounds like the big, the big consequence here would be that the pharmaceutical company, the people selling the medicine, tend to, send, could stand to lose a lot of money. So the pharmaceutical company could lose a lot of money, right? That would be the big, the loss of money would be the big um, probably the biggest hit there. So, when I look at these two errors now, a statistician has to sort of think through these errors and say, well, which one's worse? If they're sort of equally bad, I might stay with a 5% significance level. If I think the type 1 is error is worse, or do I think the type 2 is worse, I might start to make adjustments to my significance level. Okay, so type 2 error, the pharmaceutical company loses money. Obviously, I don't want that to happen. I don't want the pharmaceutical company to lose money. But type 1 error was deaths, right? Deaths. Uh, that's, it seems to me, it's pretty obvious that type 1 error is much worse than the type 2. So I am going to stay with my 1% significance level, even if this could happen now, because if I lower my significance level to 1%, remember the, they're on sort of a, a seesaw, right? At 1% significance level, type 1 goes down, but type 2 starts to go up. So you have a higher probability, your beta level goes up, you have a higher probability of type 2. But I'm not going to change my significance level. I'm going to leave my significance level very low because I don't want deaths, right? Type 1 is the one I really need to address. Now, can I address type 2? Yes. Yes, I still can. I'm going to leave it at 1% because I want to make sure type 1 has a much lower probability of happening. I could simply just collect more data. If you remember, if you collect more data, increase the sample size, then the probability of type 2 kind of naturally does go down. So to me, I would leave this as, I, this is one of those situations where I would want a 1% significance level with a pretty big data set, right? I'd want a lot of people in my experiment before I made that decision, okay? So this is kind of just giving you an idea of what the, before I ever, before a statistician ever starts the collect data and thinks about, you know, doing the hypothesis test, they have to think through this. Like, what, what are my consequences of type 1 and type 2 error? And then they can adjust where they're going to set their significance level and how much data maybe they want to collect um, based on these recommendations. So you have to sort of think through, what, if I got this wrong, um, what would be the consequences? In a lot of ways, type 1 and type 2 error is a thinking through consequences, right? If you get this wrong. You can imagine what if governments oftentimes have to make decisions that affect their entire population, everybody under that government. So if a government makes a decision based on random sample data and they get it wrong, that could have really bad consequences. And that's kind of what this is all about.
Okay? Well, I hope that was helpful for you. And uh, just giving you an example of a type 1 and type 2 error. And, uh, and I will see you all next time.